Happy Sunday. Welcome to Old South Church in Boston on this fifth Sunday of Pentecost. Welcome to you, the old and young, the curious and questioning. Welcome to you who hold doubt and fear. Welcome to you, the sinner and the saint. Welcome. Welcome to you, blessed and beloved child of God. Whether you are joining us this morning for the first time or the 50th, we want to know. In the chat, you'll find a link to our virtual friendship pad. Copy and paste that link into your browser and then fill it out. Tell us who you are, how you found us, and anything else that you would like us to know about you. If you leave your email address, one of us will write you back. Today's service is filled with moving hymns and inspiring reflection, the introduction of new members, and a moment of appreciation for long-term members. And after all of this, we hope you're joining today's preacher at What's the Word for a conversation about their sermon today. Friends, the hour is here. Let us come together from near and far to do this great thing that Christians have done for centuries. May the deep peace of Christ be with you. Let us pray. O God of love and light, of compassion and grace, we thank you. We thank you for the beauty of your creation, for a love that knows no bounds, for constant illustrations of your presence in us, around us, and among us too. We thank you for this day and this moment to join together as one happy throng to rejoice and rejoice again. May we delight in this joy and in your presence. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Hey kids, it's Pastor Sean. Did you know that you have special powers? It's true. The Bible tells us through the prophet Isaiah that as God's people, we are each given seven gifts or seven superpowers. They don't help us fly like Superman or disappear like Pastor Nancy. Instead, these special superpowers help us to live out our faith. You didn't know? Well, let's discover them. Wisdom. Wisdom. This is the first and greatest power. Wisdom isn't about knowing facts or being the smartest person in the class. Wisdom helps us to see God in our lives and helps us to make the right choices to bring us closer to God's way. Wisdom helps us to see the world differently and from God's point of view. Understanding. Understanding. Let's face it. Sometimes we learn about some really big things and our minds feel tangled, especially things about God. God is huge. The power of understanding helps us to untie the knots in our minds and help us to see and to know God a little bit more clearly. Counsel. Counsel. This is a really important power. Counsel helps us to decide what is right and what is wrong. The power of counsel gives us that small nudge in choosing God's way, the way of love, over our way. Strength. Strength. Following God's way is sometimes really hard, so God gives us the power of strength to help keep us going. It gives us the courage to do what is right, no matter how hard it might seem. Knowledge. knowledge. The power of knowledge might sound a lot like wisdom or understanding, but this power helps us to know ourselves and the world that God created. With the power of knowledge, we are able to listen, think things through, and learn new things, and maybe change. Piety. piety. This is a pretty funny word, but piety basically means making room inside yourself for honoring God and honoring the reflection of God in all of creation. This power helps us to honor God, even when it's hard, and to love and honor our neighbors, even when we don't want to. Wonder. Wonder. Have you ever thought about all of the amazing things about this life and said, wow, God is so great. I wonder what that could mean. Wonder is the power that keeps us amazed and curious by all that we see. Wisdom, Wisdom. understanding, understanding. counsel, strength, strength. knowledge, Knowledge. piety, Piety. wonder. Wonder. Pretty amazing, huh? These powers are given to us by God to help us be resilient and overcome anything hard that happens to us and to help keep us following God's way. But here's the thing about these superpowers. We have to exercise them so that they remain strong and powerful in our lives, so that our fear and anger don't take control from them. We can do that by going to church school and worship, reading our Bibles or other books about wisdom and truth, and by having good relationships with trustworthy people, like praying to God or talking with a parent. When we do those things, we supercharge our superpowers and can live our lives with all of the help that God gives us. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for these powers. Help us to use them in everything we do, 
and we all say, Amen. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, but she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O oh God, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. In today's text, we encounter a woman who is unnamed. She's been suffering for 12 years, spent all her money on health care, and that still didn't help. And if anything, she's getting worse. Biblical scholar Walter Gaffney uses the word restriction to translate the Hebrew word for unclean. So she was restricted from participating in the life of the community. And according to Levitical purity codes, a woman hemorrhaging in the social cultural context of that time was not allowed to participate in the life of the community. She was restricted, ostracized, marginalized from community. And even more, in touching anyone, they would become unclean. And so it was also on her, so her responsibility, to not contaminate others. And so in her reaching out to touch Jesus, she was putting herself and him at great risk at least in the community's eyes, she was making Jesus unclean. I can't even begin to imagine how this journey towards reaching out to Jesus must have been for her. It takes tremendous courage and vulnerability to do what she did. She took what was probably at this point one of the greatest risks of her life. And even more, knowing that others would think she's absurd for doing this. And she sits and prods and thinks to herself, if only, if only I could touch his garment, then I will be healed. To her touch, Jesus responds, who touched me? Then after she shared her testimony, he says, daughter, you are healed. Go in peace. Jesus did something that no doctor was able to do in 12 years and in healing her he dignified her 
acknowledge the humanity of someone the society had rendered invisible, disrupted the norms of who is included. And it was this woman who expanded the perspectives of all those gathered. Kwok Pulan, a post-colonial feminist ethicist, says that the subaltern woman, so the, the most marginalized, should be given epistemological privileges, so meaning-making privileges, as they will have the most inclusive perspective. And we see here this unnamed woman, now daughter, being given epistemological privileges. Jesus renders visible one who the community had rendered invisible. She is colloquially and popularly known as the woman with the issue of blood. And we experience it here too. And yet, when we look clearly at her story, the true narrative about her life is that she is a woman who took agency to participate in her own healing in a socio-cultural context that justified restricting her from participating in the life of the community. And perhaps our inability or choosing not to see her says more about us than her. Our struggles to connect with the suffering of another and their lived experiences. And just the idea of risking the loss of our own personal societal status. Our own struggles to accept the parts of ourselves that we feel embarrassed by, ashamed about. And so what do we do? We project them onto other people instead. And we're not able to see them. And so if we took a moment to put ourselves in her shoes and saw the world through the lens of her own humanity, her own hopes, dreams, desires, aspirations. What we see here is someone who has defined for herself who she is going to be and not allowed society to define who she is. She knows her worth. She exercises her agency to rewrite her narrative. And in her standing up for herself, she also creates room for others to stand up for themselves. She names herself with her actions. It takes tremendous vulnerability to name your desires, especially in the midst of people who know you, who have decided who you are. I'm sure we can relate to some extent to times in our lives when we've so desperately wanted something and knew that the people around us wouldn't get it. And yet something deep down kept nudging, a deep knowing, a deep curiosity. And we have to choose ourselves and we take great risks, not knowing what the outcome will be knowing we might be embarrassed, bring shame to ourselves and others. And yet we need to do something for ourselves and trust that Jesus will ask about us. Who touched me? What is it in your life that you feel is weighing you down, that has defined you in ways that are disconnected from who you are? What is it that you need to reach out about, to exercise your own agency about, to alter your life narrative? Jesus says to her, daughter, 
you have acted with great faith and this has made you well. Kelly Brown Douglas speaks of faith as a moral participation that changes the realities of this world. A moral imagination that understands that life is not constrained by what is. That in fact, this kind of imagination is the hope that trusts. And in the words of MLK, that the arc of God's universe does in fact bend towards justice. A woman not allowed to participate in society uses her voice, her agency, participates in a way that changes the realities of her life. And in doing so, whether knowingly or unknowingly, impacts the lives of those around bearing witness and those who will hear of the story. She reminds us of the courage to voice and speak our truths. It is in our voicing, in our sharing of ourselves, in our vulnerability, that we are freed, liberated, healed, free to be who we are. Our faith makes us well and we can go in peace. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance, have it in its fullness. And here we are today, bearing witness to a life lived abundantly. Amen. maker of heaven and earth. You extravagantly pour out your love upon us to drench and anoint all of creation. It is out of this love that you gave us a home and created an earth of unsurpassed beauty and called it blessed. You continue to recreate and repair this world with that same attentive love. So often we fail to be stewards and caregivers of your creation. Holy One, open us to admire and love the world as you so fiercely and tenderly do. God, at times we feel cast at sea, unmoored and lost. We lose our sense of direction and your guidance. 
life rolls in wave after wave and we are trying to catch our breath. Hush the storms of anxiety in our minds. Calm our hearts that we might know peace. Let us be still so that we can hear your still, quiet voice beckoning us to new horizons. Holy Spirit, you are anywhere and everywhere. You are our constant companion while also being in all the places we cannot go. We uplift to your safekeeping all those in need of your healing and abiding presence, that all your children shall come to know their blessedness. May all suffering and surviving in the midst of violence and terror feel the comforting embrace of the Holy Spirit. God, bring your peace that surpasses our understanding and an end of suffering to all your children. Let us hold on to hope. May we always open our hearts and minds to the possibility of transformation, for you are the God that turns swords into plowshares. We pray for all who know the pain and exhaustion of what it means to go without food and sustenance. Your creation is so rich in resources, yet such inequities remain when it comes to access to nutritional food, adequate health care, education, and safe homes. We repent for the ways that we have participated in perpetuating these systems of oppression. Let not our spirits be overwhelmed and our compassion fatigued by the injustices we witness. Help us to hold our leaders and ourselves accountable to care for all who are forgotten and marginalized. Eternal God, whose love is from everlasting to everlasting, may your radiance be freed within us and all humanity, most particularly where greed, fear, and desperation have hold on human hearts and minds. Fill our hearts, use our hands, guide our feet to help build your kingdom here on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And This next part of worship, as old as Christianity, and here's what it's about. It's about discipleship. It's about the heart behind the gift, not the size of the gift. It's about the hope behind the gift, not how much of the budget it will meet. It's about sending our money to the place where we want our hearts to be, because as Jesus said, the one will surely follow the other. It's about trusting that if everyone here gives until it feels good, gives enough to make a broad smile break out upon your own surprised face, then this world, it'll never be the same again. 
here's what this is about. Standing up, leaning into the future, it's about believing that a new heaven and a new earth are possible. Here's what this is about. Becoming disciples of Jesus and not just members of the church. The morning's offering will be given and received. Good before I know I don't have much to give I can open any door everybody knows the sea. knows the score I have finally found a way to live it's in the color of the South Church, we are so blessed today to receive three new members into the life of our community. We are gifted with these folks who have decided to stand up even in this time of pandemic and say, these are our people and we are joining together as church family. We are so gifted that they will be sharing their talents and their energy and time and passions with us. And so today we welcome into membership J.T. Sanders, Mariana Spira, and Tish Dragonet. And we also are able to witness and bless J.T. Sanders as he is baptized into the Christian church. J.T. Sanders has come to this church for Christian baptism. It is a gift to the church 
to witness adults making this confession of faith. JT, do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I do. I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, I do. I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your brother, Lord, and Savior? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? If so, say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. O oh God, we remember and give thanks for the times you came to us in water and saved us. You called forth the world out of the deep. You washed the earth with the flood and bore us over the waters in the ark. You brought us with Moses from slavery to freedom through the Red Sea. And in the fullness of time, you came to the earth, as all of us did, through the waters of a mother's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan, washed the feet of his disciples, and sent them forth to baptize by water and the Holy Spirit. And now Larry and Paul will pour the water. And if you join me in a posture of blessing. Bless by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By the power of your spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in the one baptized this day, that he may rise in Christ. Amen. 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 John Thomas Sanders, we baptize you in the name of the one who Jesus called Abba, Father. And in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit be upon you, JT, child of God, disciple of Christ, member of the church. Amen. Congratulations. Friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. These people have found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. They have been led by the Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of the Christian Church. They are here, as we are here, to endeavor to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and our neighbors as ourselves. God help us. Friends who are joining, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We give thanks for every community of faith, which has been your spiritual home. And we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Do you promise by the grace of God to continue in your pilgrimage of faith, to be Christ's disciple, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? We do, we do. Do you promise to walk with us in faithfulness and in Christian love? And do you promise that so far as able, you will participate in the life of this church by worshiping God with us and offering your time, talent, and means for the ministry of this church and for the larger church of which this is a part. We do. Friends, we then welcome you as partners in the common life of this church and join our voices to share our covenant of mission with you. We pledge to give ourselves to the one whom Jesus called Abba, Father, as the God in whose love we are grounded, and to Jesus Christ, God incarnate, who rules our lives. We give ourselves to God, the Holy Spirit, the one who sustains, recreates, and guides us. We promise to walk in covenant with one another, with the wider church, and with the Old South Church, 
secure in God's grace, and prepared in gratitude to live by the promise and serve in the hope of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ and, of, and on behalf of Old South Church, we extend to you the hand of Christian love, welcoming you into the company of this local church. Congratulations and welcome. Amen. <laughs> Each year at this time, we pause to honor our long-term members, those who have been a part of this congregation for 20 years or more. The names and faces of those being added this year appear before you, the class of 2001. We also honor the rest of our long-term members who have been with this church many for decades, in one case since 1949. Is not this a beautiful sight? Long timers, thank you. Thank you and bless you. Church, will you pray with me? Almighty God, we give thanks on this day for these long timers who are so dear to us and to this family of faith. We thank you that in eager strength or quiet gentleness, in ways known and unknown, they continue to bear witness before you. We thank you for their long memories and for all they have seen and experienced of change, tumult, and progress. In the name of our Savior and brother, Jesus Christ, amen. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind ever so gently be at your back. May the sunlight of Jesus Christ shine upon your face. May the rain fall softly upon your fields. Until we meet again, may God 
keep you in the hollow of her hand. Go in peace.